This is a Sylvanius vertical axis wind turbine. I had first uh, used this smart drive generator out of the washing machine on the uh, little Danosphere. Uh, but the Danosphere wasn't large enough, it didn't have enough torque to uh, spin the generator. So I went down to the scrapyard and I found two of these uh, 36 inch round metal ducts. They're three foot tall each, 36 inches round, and I split them down and stacked them on top of each other to create the uh, Sylvania shape. And then what I did, here let me stop this thing here. So I took some bed frames, used those there in here for the supports, welded them together. See the end of the bed frame there. In here and then what I did is I took an old uh, rocking chair that has a swivel base mounted everything to that and then I used uh, the same square tubing that I had the uh, Dana sphere mounted on and I ran that all the way up to the top and then I got three cables tied those each off to a tree to support the top Now on the smart drive motor, I don't know if you can see this very well the way the light is out here, but I rewired this, is basically what I did is I split it in half. And that will double the amps, but to get the 14 volts it would have to spin twice as fast as it normally would. So I went ahead and rewired that the way uh, I showed in a previous video um, about the smart drive motor and how it works and all that. I went online and I ordered a uh, three phase bridge rectifier for uh, wind turbines. I just have it uh, clipped together with some uh, alligator clips right now for testing. And then uh, that clips into the terminals here on the smart drive motor itself. There's three phases, one, two, and three, and that corresponds here. And then you have two here that come off for your positive and negative on your DC side. It starts out as three phase AC, goes through the rectifier and spits out DC. And then I have your positive and negative just run back the, through the cable here and over here I have my meter set up so we can read some voltages now according to the weather channel right now we're running about five mile an hour wind kinda goes down I would say to about three to eight somewhere in there right now it seems to be around five miles an hour and at that four to five, let me see if I can't turn the light on on this here. Let's see if we can pick that up. At the four to five, we're running about four and a half volts. Here comes a little gust of wind picking up now. We hit seven, almost eight volts. Later on here in an hour or two, we're supposed to pick up to about 15 mile an hour winds. And at 15 miles an hour, we should reach an open circuit voltage of around 18 to 20. This uh, vertical axis wind turbine will start rotating in about 3 to 4 mile an hour. Right now she's spinning kind of slow. We're probably running about four mile an hour wind. And at about four mile an hour wind, we have a voltage of almost five, four and a half. Here comes a little gust now picking up. I put two LEDs in series here so I don't blow them. So it takes about five volts to kick these on and they should be safe up to about seven or maybe eight volts. You can see them pulsating, it's because of the three phase rectification. AC power, you know, switches from positive to negative, back and forth, 
so the rectifier will switch it to a steady stream of DC. Uh, if I put a capacitor in between here, it would smooth this out and it'd probably stay on pretty steady. There's a little more gust picking up here. A little bit over 8. As the voltage gets higher, these guys will stay on. Because, of course, the generator is spinning faster and the uh, AC comes out a lot smoother. This is in the testing phase now. I still have a few more things to do to complete this. On the top and bottoms, here let me stop this again. Uh, on the top up here, where it's open all the way through here, I need to put a cap, you know, a half circle on the top and a half circle in the bottom to close that gap in there and that'll allow it to catch a lot more wind which will give it a lot more torque. I'm not sure if it'll increase the speed, but it'll increase the torque by being able to keep the wind in it. At this point, I probably have about six hours of my time to put this together. And uh, most of the material was scrap, and I think I have maybe $40 in material. The smart drive motor was from a broken down washing machine, so of course that was, uh, that was no charge. And uh, the majority of the cost that was involved with this was getting the, the bridge rectifier. I got that off of eBay, I think it cost me uh, $25. Uh, the wire I had, the cables I had, and uh, the base there with the bearings was, you know, like I said, from a, an old swivel rocking chair. So at this point, I'm going to put this up and here in an hour or two when the wind picks up to 15 to 20, uh, like the news says, I'll come out and check voltages and see where I'm at and we'll go from there. Okay, if you've seen the last little clip there, I didn't have a load on this thing and it spun way too fast and blew the damn thing apart. Popped two welds on it. So I uh, went ahead and welded everything back up and now I put a load on there so it won't uh, free spin and go too fast. Um, let's see here. We can get standing battery voltage. Just creeping down here. Standing battery voltage is 12.27 we'll say. Get my meter back on here. Oh, we need a good connection. Okay. Now, we'll wait on the wind to pick up and we'll see the battery charging. So right now we're at 12.26. I'm going to go ahead and pause it and uh, when the wind picks up again I'll uh, bring it back on. seen here today, I believe I'm going to go ahead and unmount the uh, smart drive motor and wire it back to the way it was from the factory. It's not going to have as many charging amps, but the uh, cut-in voltage for charging, you know, which we want to charge at around 14, 15 volts, will, uh, will happen at a lot lower rotational speed. So we won't need 15 mile an hour winds to charge the battery, we can probably get away with 8 to 10 mile an hour winds and charge the battery that way. Because what I did, as I said earlier, I split it in half, which will produce more amps, but uh, it takes a faster rotational speed to get the voltage higher. So right now we got some pretty decent wind, and we're just barely reaching a charge voltage here. But nonetheless, it is still charging the battery. So at this point, I'm very satisfied with the project and uh, keep going.
going and keep tweaking on it. And here in a week or two, I'll rewire this thing. I'll get the caps I was talking about on the blades on the top and bottom. And uh, go ahead and get everything mounted back up. Wait for another windy day, and I'll post an update. You'll see a lot of uh, posts online that say when you design these, you want to have an air gap in between your two blades. And the theory behind that shows here in this uh, picture where the air is going to hit one of the concave blades and some of it will pass through to the other side and help push it around. Um, well, what I had found, I found a document that MIT had posted a few years ago where they did a lot of research into this. And they found that with the air gap, you lose some of your rotational speed and you also lose some of your torque. Uh, so I didn't go with that design. Uh, what I decided to go with was this design here, like I have in my windmill now, which does not have the gap in the center. Uh, what they found is that is the best design, and you do want to have a cap on the top and the bottom to capture as much wind as possible. Uh, you'll see three and four bladed designs, and MIT also stated that two blades was the best way to go. If you wanted to have a four blade design, so that would help it start at a lower bit of a, uh, a little bit lower of a wind speed, you would design it like this. You would have your two blades on the bottom, and then on top you would add another two blades at 90 degrees to the blades below. Uh, you don't want to go with a six blade uh, because that will start hurting your torque and total wind speed also. This here is a combination of a Darius and a Savonius. Uh, this will allow uh, a lot higher rotational speed. The Darius type, which is the extra fins coming out, takes a lot higher winds to start. So you'll use the Savonius in the center to start at low speeds and once it reaches a certain speed then the uh, Darius effect will, will take place. Well before it got too late I wanted to show some sort of a free energy setup here. So I took my jewel ringer circuit, my uh, Lynx jewel lamp version 2, plugged it into the battery, hooked the LED light up, get a little shot here of what we got. Wind power, baby. This is an exciting point. It's been a while since uh, I started this project and been able to get to this point. You can see we do have a little bit of a load on the battery now. So that's where we're at right now. Wait on the wind to pick up here for a second and then we can show some decent charging. Okay, here comes a little bit of wind. Let's see if we can get a little charging here. There's a decent gust coming through now. Let's see here. Uh oh. Look at that, guys. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Alright, well that's that for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and button all this up. And then, like I said before, here in the next few days, I'm going to uh, rewire this thing so it'll have a, a lower cut-in speed. And then uh, I'll post an update. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. All you guys out there in YouTube land. We'll catch you next time.